Uh, hello and welcome all to the winter session of Sea Conversations. I am Dushant Asher and I teach at the School of Environment and Architecture. Sea Conversations are the school's engagement with the world that brings in discursive vigor, as well as the joy of connecting to new imaginations, voices, and ideas. This is the 18th cycle of CCP Conversations, and this series is partly supported by Urban Center Mumbai. Uh, the winter series of Sea Conversations titled States of Matter has six talks from around the world. Uh, this series of talks are curated from the research interests from me and my colleagues uh, in the questions of materials, matter, and making of big forms and new phenomenologies of navigation. This series intends to open discussions and interrogations on the dialectical relationship between form and matter, technology and phenomena, between the forest and the factory, the kitchen and laboratory. Today is the sixth and the last conversation of this series, titled Mid-Tech Matters, by Felipe Saturuda. Uh, Felipe is an architect uh, and a master in urban architecture and urbanism from Design Research Lab from the AA in London. Uh, in 2016, he co-founded BASE, an architectural systems design research studio. Uh, BASE develops an architecture oriented towards geometry, complexity, unconventional material, and innovative spatial formulations by integrating digital advancements with traditional processes. Together with BASE, uh, he, has a, he has been a finalist for YAP, uh, Constructo 8 and 9, from MoMA's Young Architects Program, and has been invited to the 2021 uh, Venice Architecture Biennale main exhibition. Uh, Felipe has also collaborated with several architecture practices in Santiago and London, working on projects for Latin America, Europe, and Asia. He has wide ranging academic experience as professor and visiting tutor lecturer at several academic institutions, including UDD and UNAB in Chile, Pratt, uh, GAUD in New York. KEIO University in Tokyo and the Architectural Association in London. Currently, Felipe is the coordinator of the Architectural Association's Visiting School Program, Wing of Fire, and the director of Master in Architecture Program at UDD's Architecture Faculty in Santiago, Chile. So, uh, welcome, Felipe, uh, and over to you. Well, hi, Dishan, and thanks for the, the invitation and for the opportunity to share some of our um, ideas um, that we've been working on. Um, well, and thanks to you and to Anush and to everybody at SEE for, for having us here. Um, it's, a, it's a really great pleasure to, 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 to share these ideas and to hopefully have a, a conversation on, on a project um, and a few systems that I'm gonna show to you and, and to try to um, make sense of, of um, this idea of mid-tech and why this um, mid-tech, it does matter. Um, and so I will start with uh, sharing the, um, the presentation and just to start off, um, just give me one second here. There we go. So it should be uh, showing okay, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's great. Thank okay. You. Well, that's great. Thanks. Um, right. So, um, yeah. So the the when I got the the invitation um, to this uh, symposium of states of matter, uh, I I thought that the title of it and the and the abstract and the ideas behind it were very provoking and um, and and there's a lot of familiarity on on. And I would say that the, the the context of the this conversation and the work that we've been developing as studio. Um, so, um, just a quick disclo disclosure is that the, the title Mid Tech Matters" is also a wordplay between this idea of that the mid tech it does matter, but also matters, you know, as a collection of uh, physicalities and materials that will try to build up this argument, and and that's gonna the, the presentation is gonna be about. Um, so, first of all, um, I'm here in the representation of my studio, um, which is Bay Studio, uh, which is an architectural systems design research studio that we founded together with Barbara. Um, she's my partner in, in the studio. Um, and um, so we, we started the studio in 2016. 
um, after quite a, a long experience of being abroad, studying together in London, working there, um, and sort of like getting, you know, a, 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 a lot of these ideas that we saw, like this was like 10, 15, almost 15 years ago. Um, and there was a lot of um, new ideas um, when we visited the, the, the Architectural Association and we studied our masters there. And we sort of like got um, entangled with a, a, a new sort of like set of uh, ideas and words and and, and languages that were very attractive to us um, in terms of the advancements, the digital design, the technologies. Um, but then we came back to Chile in 2015 or, or so, and we sort of like, we, 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 we saw together that there was an opportunity to bridge, you know, these um, sort of like two worlds of uh, a really well advanced, um, uh, an avant-garde, I would say, um, way of doing architecture um, with a more local, a more uh, context-based um, manners that we found here in Chile. So in this idea of putting those two worlds together, we decided to, um, you know, to, to formalize our practice as a studio, and but not as an office, but as a studio. Um, so we, we are focused on doing um, a, a studio that is more um, about doing exploration and research on design and not necessarily to build on projects, but to build on architectural systems. And I will try also uh, to explain this idea that when we when we started the studio, we decided to go for um, a systemic thinking. And this is something that we believe that is not a, a, an absolute truth to everyone, but we, we do believe that the systemic thinking is something that it can go across um, all cultures and all uh, programmatic and economic and technological contexts um, because we can operate with these ideas uh, in an abstract level um, at different scales of, uh, of buildings or structures with different materials. Um, but there's a way of thinking about the project and thinking about the design and thinking about architecture. And actually we were also sort of like decisive on moving away from this idea of the project, um, understanding the, tra the traditional understanding of, of the project as a direct response to, to, to a request or a commission, uh, which we believe is more static and unchanging. And, and it has a very sort of like direct purpose, right? On, on, on meeting a predefined set of criteria. Um, the project embodies this idea of represent representational reality and, and because it's notated and illustrated, it's therefore interpreted, right? So it's, it, it, it has a, a sort of like a personal judgment of that reality. Um, the, and the project also creates this idea of a self-contained and self-referential outcome. Um, it's conclusive and it, and it comes from a linear design process. So we try to move from that idea of the project towards the idea of the system, which we believe is a more adaptable um, and more open uh, for design strategies. Um, and contrary to, 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 to what the project could um, represent as a prescriptive and deterministic nature of the project, well, the system is more exploratory and generative. Um, it's adaptable and flexible. And this image, we, I, I think it's very illustrative of it. And so just to quickly explain, you know, we're showing here, this is an experiment that NASA did uh, several years ago where they place basically the same spider, the same species of spider um, to build up nets, but they were um, stimulating those, uh, that spider with different sort of drugs. So like weed, you know, like marijuana and LSD and, uh, and acids. So the resulting patterns of those spider webs um, are not somehow are not preconceived, you know, are the, the outcome comes as an emergent result that, um, that the, the, the agent, let's say the spider is able to produce by a certain stimulus. So, you know, to build up that frame, that, that set out um, is, way more important than to build 
you know, a, a formal result or, or, or a conclusive result. Um, so that idea of, of the system as a design, um, as, as a process of designing instructions and protocols um, rather than specific formal outcomes is something that we're really sort of like eager to pursue uh, as a studio and in, in our in our um, in our practice, and and also considering that the the system it's it really needs for a technological framework uh, to operate basically to to build up that that idea and to make it um, uh, to materialize those ideas. So the technological framework is something that comes really sort of um, as a as a paramount importance for, for this idea of the systematic design, the systematic thinking. And there was a quote, a very sort of like famous quote that, that it was really um, shocking and, and, and quite important and it made a lot of sense and sort of like resonated a lot in, in, in the way we believe um, uh, architecture should be addressed uh, currently or under you know the idea of operating in Chile in, in our context, uh, which is from Cedric Price, and where he says the technology is the answer, but what was the question? So that's a really provoking quote um, in terms of um, not just addressing technology as something that is um, that goes across ages and goes uh, across um, a certain mechanical. Um, um, equipment and, and, and machinery. Um, so, so the technology is, if it's, if technology is the answer, basically we're called to doing questions and to, to pursue how technology can, you know, operate in our favor for our projects. So the work that we do, it becomes highly curatorial um, and the constant assessment and the evaluation of the processes is as crucial as the initial setup, basically. Uh, so this question set the focus on technology and the processes, but not it doesn't specify uh, on, on what kind of technology, basically. So that idea, and, and, and as I was mentioning at the very beginning, the idea of seeing you know, technology as the technological advancements and the machinery and the you know, robots and, and, and 3D printing technology and digital fabrication and digital processes and programming versus the, the idea of technology, you know, as, as a hand saw or, or a hammer uh, and, and, and the idea of the, of the workshop as something that is way older than, you know, the, the, the machines. Um, it's somehow, it, it gives this idea of where in the bar are we gonna position, basically. So they're starting to build this idea of, you know, if, if we are, if, we're, uh, if we wanna put ourselves into a specific point in the bar of technology, uh, well, first of all, why not consider digitally designed architectural system to take advantage of that computational and technological potential? And, but can be built using simple local processes and tools. So basically we started uh, questioning ourselves, um, how can we move towards something that hybridizes this, um, this sort of like two ways of addressing technology. Um, and that's where the mintech comes as a sort of argument and an idea that we wanna pursue. So we place in the middle of the bar basically between low tech and high tech. And this doesn't mean that we don't want to be at the extreme. So we basically move from one way to the other. Um, understanding also that there are certain ideas that, that are related to each one of these sort of extremes and, and that we don't want to dispose of any of those. Basically, we can talk about matter as an issue of low tech and material as an issue of high tech or the analog versus digital or physical and virtual, artisanal and machinic, local and global, the simplicity of the low-tech processes versus the complexity that the high-tech allows, uh, or the customization or the standardization of one of them. So that universe of ideas sort of like, um, and, and the way those are uh, merged together is something that we're really, uh, we've been pursuing 
uh, for, for quite a long time um, as, as an agenda for the studio. And we, we, we have a, a sort of like a set and a pool of different uh, uh, systems that we've been developing um, that, that are trying somehow to, to sort of like build up this argument and not just by words, but by actually um, doing design and making space that can sort of like, you know, uh, embodies these ideas. And so they have an extensive catalog of different uh, systems that we developed and that are basically focused on creating unconventional and adaptable geometrical material and spatial formulations. Um, with this idea of the mid-tech, um, we can move from um, handmade, uh, materials and that are augmented and advanced in the way they're um, applied to a certain structure because we can digitally uh, advance that and, and, and simulate that and modulate and, and, and to see how that can operate in, 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 a, in a short or in a small scale, in a large scale, in a medium scale, etc. So these mid-tech systems are somehow related also to certain principles basically. Um, and we have somehow um, trying to catalog these uh, systems by principles that are material, structural, and formally um, sort of like driven uh, from inflatable systems, tensile, collaboratives, gravitational, tensegrity, responsive, additive, and reciprocal. Uh, and this is a somehow, it's, um, uh, it's an abstract exercise that we've been doing, you know, how to catalog the systems, because we know that each structure, or if it's a pavilion, or if it's a, a house, um, we know that there are more than one of these ideas and these principles that work together also. So I would say that for the purposes of arguing for this idea, um, we're trying to catalog this, but it's not necessarily, um, you know, that one principle applies only to one project or one structure or to one system. Um, but basically, I, I want to show you. Um, I, I said in the in the abstract that it's going to be. Um, we're going to try to build up the idea of the mid tech and the importance and why mid tech matters um, from from three different systems. But actually, I. I I, I thought that maybe adding a fourth, uh, it would be quite interesting also just to see how they sort of like communicate also um, from one system to another and how ideas are somehow shared um, from one system to another. Uh, also thinking that um, we take the, the idea of copy and paste as something that we deeply value in terms of being um, efficient and, and being um, and, and being um, um, responsive and adaptable to to the ideas that can operate in one context, you know, and to share it to another one. So, uh, probably, uh, you know, to to talk about when we talk about systems, we can we 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 allow ourselves to 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 go in the repetition and, and to go into the addition of system. Um, as a variation that can happen for one specific commission or request or a structure that has a certain context. And, and, and when, we, uh, when we face a, a, another challenge or, or another um, project, um, we also take those ideas and see how that sort of like operates. And if it makes sense, we sort of like edit those ideas through and, and we try to build up a, a certain catalog of of structures that in a way they start to talk about the same ideas behind. So I'll show um, these four um, systems starting from the inflatable. And in each one of them, I will try to be as, um, to go as deep as possible in all the, um, the ideas that were behind and the context of, and when it was developed, et cetera. Um, so maybe that sort of like cross, um, um, the cross communication between systems is something that you can actually uh, see yourselves and, and maybe question yourself. So the first 
system is um, to talk about is um, it's going to be about the principles of the inflatable systems, and this system is called Avoid. So, Avoid is um, it's a system that started as an academic agenda. Um, with Barbara, we 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 taught this studio in 2018 at UDD. Um, and we were working on the idea of uh, inflatables and nomadic system um, as, you know, as to question um, that, that the, the notions of structure are not only and not always related to um, that idea of rigidity and stiffness, basically. So we, we, we started to see air as a means of structure. And, and we know that this is something that it was highly developed in the 60s um, and 70s with radicalism and, 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 and sort of like the, those uh, experimental ideas that came up at, at that time. Um, and somehow we, we saw that those ideas were um, sort of lost or got lost um, sometimes in the 80s, uh, 90s uh, with postmodernism. And, but there were, um, and, and those pneumatic um, systems were systems that can allow to, to create space in a very um, rapid way and, and to create a space that are temporal and, and that, are, that are flexible in the way they can be occupied. And, and again, the idea of a structure that is not necessarily rigid or stiff, um, it was something that it was, quite um, interesting to, to, to keep on looking at the uh, at what the nuances of it um, are behind and, and, and what we can do with it. And so we, we, we went for this agenda and we started working with the students. There were third year students from their bachelor um, degree, um, third year undergrad students. And so we had this group and we started working on different prototypes, you know, combining um, some uh, very sort of like um, draft ideas in, in, in paper. Uh, and then we went to the physical models to sort of like inform those ideas and to evaluate them. And then we jumped into digital design to, to sort of like uh, augmented that and, and, and optimize those um, designs. Um, and that was a very iterative process that we did with the students. And and yeah, the, the, we, we were investigating basically the, the, that notion of structural resistance, right? And to see also like how, how big can we go with the, with the structures? Basically air is for free and we just needed to build up an envelope. Um, so um, with that idea, we, we encouraged the students to, to, to do this one-to-one -one pavilion that we actually built and, 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 and we placed for, um, for a few weeks and we had uh, an event there and that hosted a lot of people. And so it was basically all handmade um, with the ideas of the students that we were pushing. And, and so we, we created this, um, this pavilion, right? That, that at the same time that it was also looking for um, the questioning, the idea of temporality and flexibility um we were we were also looking at the, the way that architecture can be more transferable and more movable and 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 to again to be to join and to get on board the agenda of the radicals of the 60s in in, in terms of um this pop-up architecture that can easily create a, a, a space um with certain qualities um so and also the, the 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 this prototype gave us a lot of um, interesting ideas that we kept on pursuing, and we started building an inflatable agenda in the studio. Um, that then we did some other pavilions and and some other structures that we were trying to, um, you know, to to sort of like hack with technology and to see if we can sort of like program the the breathing of the, the of pumping air inside. Uh, so you would see a, a, a structure that is somehow uh, breathing, you know, and moving. So it's like a big animal that is lying there. Um, but also like, you know, something that it was really interesting that we started seeing there is that um, the project 
and this pavilion in particular, um, it was um, it was made by uh, techniques of that are more related to you know to fashion um, manufacturing. Um, so it was also interesting to see how the the knowledge of a certain industry can sort of like blend into architecture into into doing and manufacturing an architectural piece so and 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 we always said that this was more than a building was a garment was a piece of cloth right um in that sense so and yeah and and, and as uh, as i said you know it was um it was a an experiment a prototype that uh, we first we didn't know if it was gonna be successful in terms of you know lifting up and standing there and, and holding the space inside, uh, but it actually did, and and it also created a very sort of like um, interesting interior uh, with this um, patterning that we 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 worked um, for the envelope. So it was this sort of like weird blurry uh, interior that. It, well, you can see through it, and but but at the same time, it was somehow a, a, a sort of like a, a blurred mirror of reality, um, and and the the patterning was distorting also those um, uh, the image of the of what was behind it, right? Um, so again, and and we did this uh, with students, so they developed these uh, plans and they they set all the cutting patterns and. And they, uh, we we took all the all the different pieces and and they stitched it together, and this was all built in, um, in ten days basically design and build in ten days. So and I have this video here that it shows um, some of that process. So um, you can see there that there was a lot of like digital evaluation to see like what what's the best pattern to use, and and how it would work. Um, there were some physical prototypes also to see the, the material and to get to know like the resistance and and how to glue that together. Um, but also it, it was a very sort of like experimental process. We didn't have any answers like pre-advanced uh, answers basically. Um, so it was, uh, there was a lot of like trial and error. Um, and fortunately uh, it, it, it was all um it all directed to 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 having that piece built up in in these 10 days of work it was quite an intensive um workshop that we did with students um but it was really fun and really great to see these ideas come together and to actually create this space um and something interesting also that you know that, that as you saw in the video there like all the cutting of the pieces um, and the sizes of them, the biggest piece, uh, it was as big as possible in terms of the, 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 the size projected onto the wall, it will fit into the projection, basically. So we traced um, the digital drawings, so we didn't print any plans, we just projected them. And then we started, you know, tracing the, the, the lines uh, onto the PVC sheets, and then they glue it together and, you know, we just created uh, sort of like an opaque base for the ground and this um, big transparent envelope. Um, so yeah, and, and and it was quite a big space. You know, it was about like two hundred square meters. Um, it had like five meters height in the in the middle point, in the highest point, and about eighteen meters length and twelve meters width. So, yeah, so the idea that the, the, the patterning and the, that sort of um, um, translucent envelope, um, it, gives, it, it, it gives a sense that there, there was, there was a, a design behind. There was an intention of doing uh, um, a certain pattern that it will distort and, and it will create this envelope with a certain quality, right? And, and also like the interior um, um, was con conceived as to be just an open room, basically a, a large uh, public room uh, where you can host events, basically. So this was a, a picture that we took for the, for the opening of the pavilion. Um, 
and there was a lot of students there and their families. So they were showing also the process. Um, but you can see, and, and, and I, I really love this image because since it's really dark, um, you're not sure if it's like an exhibition or it's a party or, well, it was actually a bit of both, um, but it could be anything basically. And that idea of uh, conceiving space as not as a programmatic um, determination, um, it was something that that sort of like started to 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 interesting um, us in terms of you know questioning um, the idea of uh, the program and 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 the the architecture without a purpose, but other than you know create space and to host activities, um, and and also we we take this um, we had the opportunity. Of, for this pavilion to to actually to test and to prove and to um, and to be a part of uh, an architecture that can actually travel and be placed somewhere else. So actually, when you uh, deflated the structure, uh, we roll it back into a roll and and we put it in a in in in, um, in, a, in a cage basically, and we ship that over to New York. To Artomai, it's a, 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 an art center in, in New York. Um, and they exhibited the piece for three months. And it was there, and it was, you know, as easy as to put it in this crate and ship it over. And we went there, well, and, and just to visit the piece, right? And just with a with an air blower, and then we got um, you know, uh, we got a new space again there that it was. Pretty much uh, showing and and embodying this idea of transferable architecture and temporary architecture and movable architecture, basically. So that that was um, with Ovoid and the inflatable um, principles of these systems. So there's another system um, which is the tensile system um, that I want to talk about and to show it is another. Uh, um, it's another system that we did with our students. It's actually in the same year and the same team of students that we did avoid. Uh, we worked on this um, workshop at the university where we did Icarus, which is a it's a total different story and it's in, in terms of material and, and material system and 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 the logic and the strategy behind it, uh, which is basically. Um, um, a tensile structure that we were asked to build for um, activating public spaces um, that they belong to the underground metro ditches, right? So something that is really interesting is that in, in, in Santiago, basically, um, well, and probably everywhere where you have metro or underground lines, uh, you have these ditches, these vents, these huge public vents where, you know, they need to take out the, 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 the air from underground. Um, and there are spaces that they have a lot of opportunities since um, they they sort of like they come up in 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 the city at different sort of like random plots, right? Um, so we we were asked in one specific ditch to build you know a space um, around it and and to activate the space. So we we knew that the because we have a lot of like budget constraints and time constraints, uh, we weren't able to, to cover everything, but um, but so we basically, we saw that there was an opportunity in this um, sort of like circular um, vent that was there. And we actually, we couldn't, you know, do any foundation. So it, it, it was needed to be a sort of like um, a self-supporting structure, right? That we placed there and, and and because of its design value, it could be, you know, it could call for people and it would trigger people to be interested in going there and, you know, to, to make use of that public space around it. So we created this shaded uh, structure that it was made by um, several panels. So they create this sort of like um, hyperbolic um, geometry that we started attaching to Together and created this sort of like rounded um, shaded um, cover and that it was made with uh, bamboo and and 
Coliwe. Coliwe is a local material here in Chile. It's a native local material from Chile, which is very similar to sugarcane and and to 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 bamboo. Um, so it it was a, a it was a cheap way to to get um, you know material that we knew that it was going to work and that is temporary and that we can be uh, it can be manipulated by by people you know by humans um, without the use of like big cranes or big structures to support or scaffolds etc and so we did this uh, again with the students they prototyped it here at the university we we did this um panels and and we built um 14 panels that we then um loaded into a truck and, and they were deployed there and we mounted everything like in about two or three days um and it was very exciting to see the the the, the result of it um as you know you have this sort of like open square where nothing was really happening and then you have this structure that is calling for occupation basically again not really prescribing a, a specific function or a specific program but you know just to give shade for being there and to be you know in a sunny day and enjoy that while kids are playing around and um and yeah, so that that was a very interesting challenge in, in, in terms of operating in public space, well, or semi-public, you know, because this was a, a, a closed square that has uh, its own timings for opening, et cetera. But we have the structure and 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 we saw there was a lot of potential also with working with um with these natural fibers, right? Like bamboo, kaliwe um like this sort of like natural canes so um from that project and and actually even before we, we we were looking at also like the the ways that these materials these sort of like economic and low-tech uh materials can be again utilized and augmented in terms of their use and you know like sort of like um highlight their value basically um and and the idea behind it was that we don't need to well we had to treat materials as they are and and matter basically as as it is as it comes and to ask it um what it can and what it wants to do basically right so bamboo kali where they want to be flexible they are basically like natural iron right um so so there was a lot of like structural potential there that we with this project and with a few other several systems that we we also developed before we we already sort of like um wanted to 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 test out and to see like how how um how can we make use of it in terms of the structural potential um for creating these sort of like temporary structures so and from that point comes this uh, third mid-tech system, which is um, the Kaliwa Nest. As I was saying, um, this uh, we believe that is under the idea of collaborative principles or reciprocal principles of structuring space. Um, but it takes the idea that we explored before with Kaliwa in this structure, and 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 it tries to 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 create a, a more dense sort of like space um so again as i was saying Kaliwa is this traditional native material um that it's not that we we, we saw that nobody was using this and, and you know and and that there was um there was an opportunity that nobody saw before but actually if we looked at native cultures and um in chile particularly like mapuche culture they use a lot of uh, Kaliwe for building up their houses. You know, like that image is um, the house of a, of a Mapuche community there. And they have it um, built up and uh, using Kaliwe as a structure and, you know, wrapping this in, in, in hay. And, and the, you see the interior view of that same house. Um, there's, um, well, well, you can actually see, you know, that there's a pretty dense interior and, and there's a very sort of like 
um, um, sort of like um, um, well designed or well covered space, basically. Um, so this is actually an ongoing research that we're working on. Um, I will show you this. Um, this is a very sort of like fresh. Um, last uh, last January, we went to build this at the south of Chile. Um, and this is in a prototype phase that we're testing and we're evaluating. So we this with, with, with the idea of uh, a one-to-one -one prototype, we, we sort of like test out test out ideas uh, of construction of the structure and the way it will perform. But we actually need to see it built and, and to evaluate and to assess, you know, the behavior and how it's um, uh, how the weather is sort of like impacting the structure and the sun and you know, and and we are in a phase now where we're going to visit this structure in a month time, so after three four months, uh, just to see what happened to it basically. Um, but the interesting point of the of of this nest is that. Um, it was again. Um, this was built in a week by three people, and you know, the with no more equipment than those um, three scissor stairs and a couple of drills, and and that was it. And it's a structure that it, it covers around seventy square meters. And it's fully made with Koliwe and you know and some cable ties and some threads and and and, and screws at very sort of like specific points. Um, that basically, well, I, I'm not sure if you can see that image very well, but you know that we set the layout to 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 cover the um, the um, to, to trace the 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 outline of the of this structure. And it's basically um, sort of like a grid shell um, that creates this space um, that it was really well tested and, and, and designed digitally. And so we sort of like, we measure all the, the, um, all the, all the bars of Kaliwe, uh, those that were performing as main structure or principal elements and then the secondary elements or, or third elements that were added there. Um, so there was a lot of like um, a digital understanding of the of the design. Um, and we went there to test it and, and to see what, what happened. Um, and we are all actually now also um, doing some um, structural engineering work with it, just to see, you know, like, where the, the the pattern of of a certain density or or uh, how how much material should we add in terms of the geometry and where it has you know certain um, deviations of the of, of the structure because of material weight etc. So, but the interesting thing is that we still can by um, reading drawings, architectural drawings, and with three people with very low um, sort of like specialized labor um, those guys are actually um, uh, sort of like newly fresh uh, architects and and friends of ours that they, they have always collaborated with us um, and by just reading that drawing and you know testing and 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 building up this this structure um, you get to see you know a system that that it's somehow testing ideas further of, on the, the material capacity. Um, but again, it's not, you know, it's not like NASA engineering. It's a very sort of like low tech process again, um, assisted by digital design. Um, so we do, we do draw everything. We do measure everything um, in digital. We test and simulate everything in digital and we try out um, and we test physically, right? So this is actually a, 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 a video from, from the final outcome that we got there. Uh, we didn't have time enough to, to keep on adding, you know, bars. So, well, this is also another disclosure. So 
the idea would have been for all these nests to be way denser than than it is now. Uh, actually, we we got some material piled up somewhere around that we we didn't we just didn't have the time to to finish up the the prototype. But again, is since it's a prototype, we are we know that we will continue pursuing um, the the development of this system and to see you know as we tried Colibwe before in a certain way in a more linear way we're now using it as a as a as a nest and a more intricate um, sort of like um, um, collaboration of the of the bars right and to create these random patterns in a way and. And the final uh, mid-tech system that, that I wanted to show, um, I would say that it's related to gravitational principles, um, but also has a lot of other ideas behind it. It has the idea of tensile uh, principles. It has the idea of collaboration and collaborative structures, um, which is called Flocking Texas. And Flocking Texas is uh, this project that also started as a research that we um, we began in 2017 and that took the the simple you know simple ideas of questioning why things are doing in a certain way and so we we started looking at clay tiles that are done here in the south of Chile by you know by these guys um, and to understand that process and to see like what this sort of like um artisanal pro process or handcrafted process of creating tiles it's been done for the for several years in the same way and there's a lot of like um interesting ideas of how matter in this sense you know like mud and and, and water and and fire like very sort of like principle and and elementary materials and, and matter they come together to create this uh, particular material, right? And so th that sort of like informed this initial agenda of, of questioning what was the potential of, of clay tiles, basically. And because we, we always seen that, that the tiles are somehow aggregated in a planner, sort of like planner way, you know, to create planner roofs. Um, but there's a lot of geometrical intelligence and, and, and potential in the in the in the tile, you know, as it's concave and it has that geometry. Um, so we the 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 research started with a very sort of like naive question, um, and we strongly believe that those questions are some sometimes are the best questions because you don't preconceive the ideas or results, but you're actually moved by, you know, by your guts, basically. And the process of looking for those answers um, is where the design process comes and, and the creation of systems and to systematize uh, those ideas um, start to take place and it becomes really interesting. So the, the question it was, what if, Clay tiles were explored through new forms of aggregation and proliferation and association. Basically, you know, questioning what we saw before that why um, we've seen we've seen many roofs like and not only in Chile, for sure in India and and you know or Spain or Mediterranean countries um, where clay tiles has been used for many many years. Um, you see that there's a certain sort of like um way of doing things that has been kept the same for many years so by just asking this we started looking and questioning well what are the models that we can see that that maybe can inform the potential of new sort of ways of aggregation um and basically we started seeing at nature and particularly at these um flocks of birds and the and what it was really interesting is this emergent behavior that comes up in the flocks where basically you have a bird uh, next to another bird and they they don't have any idea of what they're building together as a global structure, right? They only obey to local, simple 
and very sort of like straight rules uh, of distancing and uh, alignment that they have and the air pressure, how it affects, you know, that if, if a bird sees that my neighbor is going that way, I, I will keep on following uh, that bird, but, you know, by keeping a certain distance, et cetera. So that idea of uh, looking at nature in a systemic way, um, somehow it allowed it allowed us to, to, to translate those ideas into design and into architecture. Um, and the way we did that, it was by, anal by analog exploration and, and to, by physically modeling ideas of how we can aggregate and how we can you know, apply sort of like local simple rules as the flock into the idea of aggregating uh, clay tiles, basically. So we did this with one-to-one -one physical prototypes um, to study patterns, you know, and 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 to see how clay tiles sort of like um, they they rest their 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 weight, you know, and what's the descent that they should keep from one to another, um, and the pattern that they create, the, the orientation, etc. So we also test that out with uh, one to one physical prototypes, not only with um, with um, one to 10 prototypes. And also we started looking at, you know, the implications of that uh, local scale rules and protocols of, you know, if we are to attach a clay tile and to hang it from a structure, um, what is the distance and, and, you know, what is the way that we should be, you know, wrapping the, 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 the clay tile and, and, and where uh, and how far away we can attach uh, and what would that imply for its neighboring tiles, etc. And we also test that in, in, in physical and we sort of like um, um, build that system as a detail uh, um, that can work um, by taking the clay tile as it comes, right? And to avoid, um, you know, any sort of like impact on the material, but to treat it as an, as, as novel as possible and and to be as respectful as possible with the material. So the idea of this wrap that is very subtle and you know and it has the minimum points just to attach the clay tile and also to keep it in place in, in case it will break, you know. And so yeah, when we test that and, and at, at that local scale and also at a global scale, right? Just to understand like what are what that emergency in the in the behavior that if we if we were to simulate the way they were placing together, um, we we can create actually larger patterns and 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 different sort of like um, aggregation aggregation uh, of of um, of clay tiles, and it will give us always different sort of like outcomes, right? Um, and and again, it has only the, um, sorry, and, and it, it only has, you know, one simple rule, which is be as close to your neighbor as the, the grid is, is allowing you to be, uh, but, but not a single tile will collapse into another, right? So, um, and that also uh, started to inform, you know, what happens when that patterning is not just a, a 2D pattern, uh, but it actually start to be placed on this idea of a more three-dimensional surface uh, that can actually, you know, create and uh, make more interesting variation in terms of the space that it can construct. And so we also started uh, exploring these um, variations digitally uh, at a global scale. And that sort of like starting to inform different applications. Basically, we, we, we started seeing so if we create a space as a pavilion, as a public space, or what if we can, you know, use this idea as a, as a mantle that can wrap up sort of like pre-existing elements such as this um, water tank tower um, and sort of like activate the space underneath or the same for, you know, like uh, areas of, you know, resting areas in, in the countryside uh, for people and workers there um, and to create, you know, more, local and more simple sort of like structures uh, that can activate space again, right? So the idea of that system and 
uh, as, a, as a logic that is already there um, that we can apply to different scenarios and different sort of like um, requirements. Um, it was always there for, you know, to, to test the capacity of that uh, transferability of the system and, the, and, 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 and to be replicable and, and to actually, um, again, copy, edit and paste you know, different sort of like uh, ideas um, or different sort of uh, applications, basically, under the same systematic ideas of the clay tiles and the way they aggregate. So we, we had this sort of catalog of, of different applications that we, we, we started doing. Um, we, the first one we did for uh, Jap Constructor program was uh, one of a competition that we were invited to. Uh, it was a finalist project that it couldn't get built, um, but it was uh, a very sort of like interesting approach to explore the initial potential of, of, of the system. Um, and then we move into a more speculative uh, approach and, to, and, and we started doing these uh, second and third applications, as I was mentioning, you know, um, what happens for platas when they, they are more like a tensile structure to create this very sort of large roof um, and or, or what happens if it works with pre-existences or with different structures that are already there. And, and actually the, the last one is the one that we, um, we, we developed for the Biennale, for the last architecture Biennale in 2021. Um, and that was a very exciting process uh, itself. Um, we got invited um, by Hashim Sarkis in 2019 when the Biennale was going to take place in the 2020 in, 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 in Venice. And, but because of COVID and the pandemic, um, the Biennale then got postponed. And so we had, let's say, like two years time to, to prepare the project and, and, and to work together with Hashim and the, the, with, with his team. Um, so we presented this idea uh, that we wanted to do uh, as a one-to-one -one structure to be placed in Giardini, in, 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 the, in the outdoor fields of, of the Biennale. Um, and we took the, the, the system and we started working with, um, um, with Arup in London as structural design engineers. Um, and we had a, a, a very sort of um, intense process of design and iterations and, you know, and to see what was the structure and what was the, the, the size of it and the weight of it. It had, it had to resist a certain weight. And, you know, since Venice is all built uh, on water, um, basically there's a lot of restriction of, you know, doing foundations and those sort of things. So it, it was very, it's a, it was a very interesting process that we had uh, for, those two years, basically, um, and this was the, the the initial idea of, of the structure that we were going to build. But then, because of again the pandemic, um, there was a lot of like economical issues that impacted the structure and the sponsors that were behind. Um, so we, you know, with time we 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 started seeing, you know, each time it was more and more difficult to reach for this structure. But then, but Hashim was very, very pushy, uh, you know, for us to go with something that he would talk about these ideas. Um, so considering time, uh, money, and many other different things, then we um, we were placed indoor, you know, we went to, uh, from Giardini to Arsenale, which is, you know, another um, space inside uh, the, the Biennale. And um, the equation was, you know, to take the same project, the same model, and to create um, a large scale model of that uh, pavilion, uh, which was very interesting at the end because um, it was um, almost a space, you know, it, it was in between a space and a model, basically. Um, it was a one to three model, and we replicated uh, all the processes behind at the same scale, right? So all the profiling of that perimeter tubes were something that we 
also did in the same way that it was conceived for the one-to-one -one pavilion. Then we attach a net um, that it will sort of like draw this um, double perpetrator surface. And then each clay tile were, was handmade um, by an artisan here in Chile. And it was, it was all shrink to one to three scale, basically. Um, the way, you know, the, the, the geometry, everything was pretty much the same. So it was a very nice, in, interesting exercise um, at the end um, that we actually um, did and we brought it to Venice with, uh, with ourselves, basically. We took it, we, we put everything on suitcases and then we move it there and, and, and we build that uh, in three days, I believe it was. Um, so, and there was a lot of like, again, you know, trying also, and we tested different patterning. At the end, we, we ended up like doing a very sort of like regular patterning for it. Um, and again, it was, you know, this whole process, although it was a one to three model, it wasn't that different from what um, a one-to-one -one prototype would have been. Um, yeah, be, be, besides, you know, the, the, the structure and that sort of like uh, the, the iron work, the rest was pretty much human based. Um, and the interesting thing was, and, and we also pushed, but we, we, we weren't allowed to, to go again to Venice during the Biennale and to change the pattern and to move the tiles and, you know, to, to create that sort of like the, the same as the digital um, iterations, uh, the, the patterning that we were studying. We also wanted to push for a more physical approach to it. Um, but we basically, we ended up with this structure, which is um, a large model. It's a sort of like a Gaudian, you know, like Anthony Gaudi would have done for, for the Sagrada Familia church, you know, with this big scale models that they're not representing something, but they're actually performing and behaving in a very close way uh, of what the reality will, will push, you know, for a one-to-one -one scale. Um, so that idea of creating this one-to-three model as a operating prototype that can actually perform and, and behave in, in, in a way that is really, really close to the one-to-one, -one, um, it was something that, you know, we, when we saw it there, it was very, very amazing because, well, it, it was a very sort of long way to get there and with all the restrictions that we got in, during the process. And at the end, it was a very um, interesting project and, and, it, it, and it, we, we got a great um, um, review from the people there and from, from the creators and our colleagues there at the Benali. Uh, so, it, it, and I think that this was, um, this image in particular, um, it's really, um, it says a lot of, you know, that the, the project and, and the system at the end um, is something that it, it can be as real as possible and as evoking as possible and as surreal as possible. Um, and all that can happen at the same time. Um, you're not, I mean, the patterning of the, the, of the shadow on, on the floor and, and you know, the, how the, the, the light will highlight the tiles on top of it. So th there's a lot of like readings that you can do for, from, from this um, image and from that structure there. Uh, and, and it was just a model. So um, hopefully we'll meet a point where we can actually develop this one-to-one -one project. Um, we're actually in close conversations with people here in Chile that might get this materialized sometime quite soon. So, and yeah, and just to, to wrap up, uh, I'm going to end up um, here with a video, with a short clip about um, this particular installation in Venice um, that I hope you uh, enjoy. And it will show uh, how it was um, installed and, and the people behind it.
Yeah, so and and then as you see there um and this is something that we really also really sort of like um we we always address is that we we do these things with a lot of people we collaborate with a lot of people basically um this is a, a collaborative work um that started quite long ago and and the way to to approach to each system is always with a group of uh um, with a group of people that are somehow sharing your interest in, and, and, and your ideas and, and your sort of like um, ingenuity sometimes, you know, of seeking new, new opportunities for, for architecture. And particularly these, um, these systems that we did, um, they always have um, people, students, professional, other disciplines also involved. So, yeah. And so that's it. That I hope that that made sense, <laughs> and and hopefully you know as as the title mentioned, um, you know again to, to to make sense in the idea that the mid tech as this hybridized process of digital, physical, and testing out it does matter, um, and also like to take matter you know as as and to question matter as as the way it is used and. And, and the way we can keep on using is something that it will open up new opportunities for architecture. Thank you, Felipe. Thanks for the lovely presentation. Um, can you, um, uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. So, um, so, so a few ideas I would just like to, uh, Converse about. Uh, there are three things uh, specifically uh, that come from uh, the work. Uh, one is, I mean, the thing that kind of binds or kind of starts this whole uh, the practice and maybe kind of way of approaching uh, architecture currently or the way we uh, build things or we sort of have an approach to building, uh, uh, you know, with what kind of ecology, I mean, ecology of materials that we have right now, not just um, the uh, the tools, but also sort of what other uh, factors sort of participate within this. So, uh, so mid mid tech as a process, I think it kind of also uh, blurs the time between the low tech and high tech because uh, technology is kind of very um, is 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 thought or is kind of seen through a very uh, linear um, chronological process. Like it's uh, the hammer was the first to come, and then the the 3D printer came, say, some years back. So I'm just trying to kind of uh, bring this factor of time uh, with this uh, the, the, the sort of idea of mid-tech, where uh, the time sort of blurs, uh, this whole idea kind of blurs time. It brings in uh, interesting relationship of tools to, to time and to kind of the processes that it kind of uh, generates. Um, and mm -hmm. I remember, I just want to kind of, even relate to, uh, you know, uh, say, for example, when we were in school, I was, I think, in the same time I was in, in, in Germany. Uh, and, and there were some, a few pressing questions at that time. And I think that the digital uh, processes or the digital exploration of form uh, couldn't manage, uh, say, the, the output uh, that it gave to kind of build it. Uh, and mm. I think this this whole uh, the, the question on this single surface where a lot of people were kind of struggling to 
uh, sort of make it. Uh, you know, once it's done yeah. uh, a digital model, uh, the problem was, you know, how to really sort of make it. So I think I think that question of time, the question of tools, the question of processes, uh, you know, it kind of and 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 I I really uh, you know like and and especially uh, uh, you know uh, come in because uh, it it was kind of bold to say uh, you know that you value copy and paste and I think that that really that that is a very interesting uh, point which kind of makes the mid tech happen. Because other than, yeah. because, you know, there's a whole, uh, in this chronological uh, advancement of technologies, you're always kind of pushing to generate, uh, you know, newer technologies, which are, which are not, uh, you're always pushing to kind of find something new. So I think mm. that there's a, there's a certain value in this, this whole, uh, you know, the, 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 the practice, or the, you can say it's actually a cultural thing to really, you know, copy and paste it and kind of then make your own uh, things with that. Uh, between systems, you know, between the kind of those mm. systems that were and the systems that are, so, so I think that that kind of um, uh, made me think of what, uh, or you know, kind of uh, what is it that you know we are thinking of uh, it as systems in this contextually placed uh, uh, argument of mid tech because um, because if you are drawing in and as you as you also kind of presented that there were some many cross connections between. Uh, you know the systems that you are also engaged in now. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a there's a there's a super hybrid sort of you know uh, uh, way of working, super hybrid process of. Uh, so now where do we call or what do we call as a system? Uh, mm. You know mm. because because yeah. in, in the in the in the Western uh, you can say uh, or maybe that the developed countries' uh, idea of mm -hmm. uh, systems are quite different. You know, They're like everything is kind of well structured, it's in place. And I think what we are kind of seeing now, and I think across the global uh, south, we are seeing these hybrid conditions which are emerging. So what, like, what would be the uh, the system mm -hmm. now? Like, what are we kind yeah. of really calling it? I well, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree on the on that um, um, reading that you're doing that. Basically, the um, the system is uh, to us is it, it's um is it's a process. It's a it, we we see the system also not as the as a resulting um structure or a project in particular, but actually the system as a thinking process, right? Um, and well, I, and that that's why I was mentioning the idea of a systemic thinking and and but I believe that there's um. The interesting thing is it happens when when you start combining ideas and when you start hybridizing processes and you see that the that the the way that happens first is sort of like abstract, right? It's it's always abstract in terms of because it's either on digital, you know, and that you can see, but you cannot actually touch and but you can iterate and you can optimize, etc., or it's intellectual basically right so it's those ideas that you're commanding to a computer to do or etc um but then like the 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 i, I think that the you know um like cool has once said i think that the you know the talking about the diagram right he he would say that the architecture is the diagram basically and when you start to making a building out of that that diagram, then you get a construction. Um, so the diagram, so sort of like is the, um, you know, is the massing, is the is the programming, is the um, is the layering of systems of uh, the MEPs or you know, um, but it it has everything. It has all the intelligence combined, but it hasn't been uh, covered with reality, basically, right? Um, it hasn't been covered with the materialization of, the, of those ideas. Um, to me, I, I think that that somehow it, 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 it reflects on the idea of uh, this systemic thinking and, and to, to allow ourselves to, to believe in that, that the system is, is something that um, is not, um, is, is the resulting process of iterating and, you know, and searching for ideas. And, and it's a very abstract process, basically. Um, and then once you get to, 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 to materialize those ideas into reality and to build up and to construct those designs or, or whatever you're doing with it, um, 
then the process doesn't stop, right? So then then you go back again into into abstract, and and then you start to see, and that sort of like physical output becomes a part of the assessment process. So, um, I I think that yeah. So and and that doesn't doesn't sort of like uh, defines if it's either you know you're doing um, a, a project or you're working on a specific research um, with certain material, well, that doesn't mean that it will stop you for, or, or it will give you a certain sort of like repertoire of tools of technology or, you know, it happens for us in this case. And, and, and we, we see the mid tech not only as, you know, digital uh, advance um, and then, physically uh um like like we, we don't see it as you know the high tech comes only digitally and the, the low tech comes only in building it right but that that's something that has been happening to us with the projects in a very sort of like natural and organic way right but it could also happen the other way around right that yeah. you know so from sketches from really really sort of like draft ideas then you you can you know, um, instruct a, a, a CNC or instruct a you know or a body arm to build up something. So, I, I think it, it comes it comes like both ways basically. So yeah, and and, and yeah. we and we say that by placing ourselves in the middle again, it's like more than being there and and to be you know um, um, restricted to one um, sort of like repertoire or another is to actually to address both and. And to be as panoramic as possible, right? Um, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was just kind of thinking that um, with this, um, um, like this time and the chronology of, of technology and kind of uh, like thinking of air as a material. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. it was there in the '60s. You mentioned uh, mentioned yeah. it in your work, but I think today, I think we we just we see our, uh, materials much more than what they were. I mean, they are not, air is something that you don't extract like stone or wood, but uh, but through this, um, uh, you can say the, the many available uh, systems to us, uh, we are able to kind of harness a few materials like this. And I mean, and, and, and that kind of also brings me uh, to this kind of, through this, I just want to kind of see uh, this, uh, technological emphasis that that kind of you uh, started it uh, how do we con contextually sort of read it like in the sense that like what is the technology that uh, you know we are kind of uh, kind of dealing with right now or kind of referring to because uh, like some of the the projects uh, they didn't really um, have any uh, you know uh, support of a, a digital tool uh, or like a CNC or a, yeah. or a robotic hand or something. And all, I think all of them were made by hand. All of them were kind of yeah. made by these. And the, 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 the entry of uh, the digital is the kind of, uh, is trying to sort of bring precision at some place, you know, kind of align things and, uh, but actually it's not so precise at the same time. Uh, and, and that's the kind of beauty of, of, of these processes and, and especially where the mid tech is kind of placed uh, is, is and and the whole uh, you know the charge of the industry the industrial uh, revolution and I think what it brought out everything sort of fits in uh, with decision parts I mean the whole idea of that kind of works uh, uh, you know that one has to fit to the other or maybe yeah. even if you kind of assemble things together the whole idea of assembly sort of works with with idea of the precision but now here I think uh, through this process. Uh, the, the digital kind of becomes a, a mediator rather than a, a generator of these systems. Um, and I think that's where, I mean, uh, and kind of linking back to the question or, or, the, or, the, or the kind of question of system, what is the system today? I think it's beyond uh, these, um, you can say the analog or the digital, but I think it's now maybe the way, so I was trying to read it is, is between what does precision do to, Say uh, materials, or maybe the the everyday engagement with uh, these objects, or everyday engagements with uh, with the build form. 
like um, like in the nest, the the, the pavilion mm -hmm. that you were building, that there were hardly elements of uh, architecture that we know of. Like there was no uh, window as we know, or maybe a, yeah. like a fixed element which is produced, or even uh, by hand, or even by by a factory. So <clears throat> so I just I just kind of was thinking of this. Uh, you know what is the process and what is the digital doing here? I mean, or what is the uh, what is the, uh, the the analog or the hand hand hands-on sort of work uh, mean? Uh, and on the other hand, like what uh, what also comes through all of this um, is the is the uh, say the kind of people or the other agencies who are involved in this process. So, like the fascinating thing was this. Uh, the the nest sort of being built by three people, and yeah. uh, and 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 sort of and and it was kind of interesting to know and mm -hmm. see the uh, these uh, principles that you're working with. Uh, I mean, just to kind of give you a small uh, introduction to it, like I, I'm working on a research in my school which works with gravity, and we kind of suspend uh, uh, fabrics and fibers and kind of work with resin to uh, really kind of uh, make give shape to it or give, they take form in that particular uh, uh, gravity uh, and that and we kind of made a, 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 a hypothetical sort of condition where it could be made by one person uh, and mm -hmm. and that kind of person goes with this one uh, cube as an apparatus and and they kind of really uh, mm -hmm. uh, with the material they source from wherever they kind of are able to sort of build it. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, I mean, that, that's what got me interested in, in the other participants, which actually make the system. Um, and also, um, like, this is one and the other is, um, like, most of the, like, for example, the, the ovoid, uh, it didn't, I mean, um, the, what was the foundation? I mean, it, it, it didn't connect to any existing uh, yeah. say systems as we know like the foundation I mean system as at many levels I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of list down mm -hmm. what all uh, systemic sort of yeah. relationships um, you know these projects are kind of trying to uh, work with and even the uh, the the nest it didn't also have any uh, sort of foundation so it was kind of its, its own uh, in its own kind of system so i'm just trying to uh you know kind of put these thoughts out and maybe yeah yeah have, yeah well uh, i mean it, it, it's fascinating the 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 <laughs> the, the way you're, you're you're seeing it also because um well and, and that's why i i also mentioned like i think that the the cross reading between systems and projects are is something that is already there and 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 i, and I think that actually uh all those things matter in a way, right? Like um, when th these projects that I showed are, well, first of all, are, are, um, are I would say are temporary structures, right? Are pavilions mostly. And, and they, they sort of like, they, they're, they were born with one purpose, I would say, that is to test out ideas, basically, right? It's, um, in a way, I can say that, yeah, or somebody could say, well, that's not really, you know, you're not doing a house, you know, like as, as, as a pop-up balloon, right? Well, but you can actually, you, you can, right? Um, you, what you need is basically, you know, the right client. Um, mm -hmm. um, because these ideas, when you test it, they become part of a sort of like a certain knowledge and, and, and this agenda that you sort of like start to spread out and to, uh, and I do that with also with students here at the university and, and we sort of like encourage them to, you know, to push that and, and not to only to survive those ideas in a project uh, that is, um, you know, um, that is saved in a computer, in a hard drive, right? But to actually go there and hands on projects and, and be with the matter and test out the materials and try it out and see what it wants to do or what it can do. So, um, and yeah, so the, 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 I would say that the cross reading of what the, the systematic or the system implications of these projects are, is, are behind. Um, it, well, it, I believe it's something that it, it goes uh, in, in the ideas of um, the, the, the geometry, the, 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 you know, the, the supporting points, the foundations, the way it's sort of like it touches ground, the way it is transferable, um, the way it's adaptable, as you know, as I was saying, like we we copy paste and edit, 
basically. And, and, and we take ideas, we paste them somewhere else and we edit them, you know, with, uh, with the, the different constraints that we can get from a context. But something that, that as you were, uh, I, I, I'm, as you were mentioning now, and, and, and sort of like it, it triggered this idea that, well, um, I think that the, the, the systems and well, not near, yeah, not necessarily systems, but architecture as a discipline um, is likely, uh, at, at least for us, is likely coming back to a way where we are more involved with the construction process, right? And that comes not only as, um, you know, you know, as uh, uh, it's not being only boosted by uh, digital equipments or you know or robotic arms or CNCs or three D printers or whatever, uh, but it's actually something that it's um, happening at these levels of you know uh, grabbing a hammer and going there and testing out and to see and to actually you know um, see with your own eyes and take with your own hands you know that uh, process and see what you can do with it and. So that I, I think that's a really optimistic um, view for for the discipline. I would say that architects are coming back to be involved with the construction and the fabrication, right? As a more let's say medieval sort of like way of doing, mm -hmm. and and we're and that's why we're also uh, we're moving away to us what what I was presenting, you know is to move away from that idea of the project, and that's why we show you know Palladio's villa. Um, because it is it, sort of like it, it has that uh, idea of uh, a very sort of like renaissance idea of a project where architects started to, you know, foreseeing the project and to draw it beforehand before it was built. So that sort of like, you know, started to bring these all representational ideas of the discipline. And we actually were, you know, we can see the future and we draw the future, you know, before uh, it is already there for somebody else to go there and build it, right? So yeah. to be, to, to come back to these processes where we're entangled together with doing, constructing, fabricating, projecting, designing, testing, evaluating, et cetera, I think it's it's great news, right? And 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 that to me is the the main difference and the 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 shift, the paradigm shift maybe that we want to do is that to move from that idea of a project which is predetermined and you know it's static and it's just one answer to one question and to move to this idea of the system as a more flexible diverse complex process and mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, and I, I, I don't know if I, I i don't know if i'm actually answering or no, the, uh, I, but, I mean, but, but I, I mean, it's a, it's yeah, a conversation, I mean, and I think I think what yeah. what you brought in, and I wanted to come back to this point um, uh, to the to the Palladian villa that uh, that you started with, um, because I think that the uh, the phenomenological experience that um, kind of makes a project like the Palladian villa, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, probably you know uh, uh, factors of of you know something which are more static, like you know, but when so uh, I would say, how are the current, like these mid-tech uh, sort of approach to architecture and the systems that are kind of, uh, kind of, you know, coming up in this whole, uh, uh, you know, matrix of things, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or when I would say, when is it informed by the phenomenological uh, experience that the architect sort of, uh, you know, starts with, or any design or any kind of build form uh kind of prepares its ambition through a phenomenological experience so um i i, I understand that the, these are still experiments and i think that uh that that a lot is sort of still about to happen but i but with this question is kind of important and 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 i've been trying to kind of uh, also also uh, think about these with the with the current um uh, ecology of the the the, the large sort of uh, shift no? from the from the project to this kind of a, a moving diagram or a kind of you know mm -hmm. evolving diagram or an evolving system uh, so where do we locate uh, you know or, or how do we sort of try and locate these phenomenological experiences within this uh, shift uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because I think that uh, right now they have been kind of uh, largely uh, you can say pushed or you know uh, you can say pursued 
through uh, through through technology and construction but i think this 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 is this is somewhere like a is it a is it a gray area is it like is it getting yeah. um, like a result yeah. of it or is it like you know where does it kind of become yeah. important or when when does it become uh, you can say relevant in the in the process or or are we yeah. kind of uh, mm. you know analyzing it so so that's something which is i think when mm-hmm. when you showed the the palladian villa to the to the current system i think where does that shift like you know so mm-hmm. yeah yeah well i i think it is a gray area it it, it totally is and um i wouldn't say that it comes at at a specific point in during the process but sometimes it, i mean for for architects that we were uh, taught in in a more traditional way um uh, my my undergrad education was very sort of like modernist education, right? Like you studied the big names of architecture, you you get to do like you know a project that has to you know answer to a certain ideas of place and climate and you know to be simple and minimalistic as possible and 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 everything was quite somehow like um, prescribed like 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 predetermined, right? Like um and and that sort of like gave the the idea of okay so we we are gonna we're gonna believe that we're doing something um and that we're creating a certain experience a spatial experience um by you know looking at a plan a section a model and and that's it basically right Mm -hmm. because we were representing that reality um we 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 carry that education. We carry that sort of like, like um, um, background, right? And that's somehow always there beforehand, right? Yeah. So, and and it's really hard to you know detach of those sort of like traditional ideas. But yeah. when we when we push ourselves into this sort of like more f- flexible and free system of design, um, we put that you know in a uh, we put that in as any other sort of like input. Right. Yeah. So, for instance, we're working now in a house that we're we're um, it's um we call it a, a kincha house, which is which is a hybrid system of uh, mud and earth um, for for this house. Um, but and and that's a the, I think it's a really nice example because um, we 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 have a very great client um, and she she's she allowed us to you know to go s- somehow beyond the, the the traditional i would say uh but yet she wants a house right she wants to have uh, her own bathroom and bedroom and you know the living room and the kitchen to work is so and, and 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 that's i mean that's totally okay i mean we have to be able to respond to that of course you know um we 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 do things for other basically um so but then but then we're, we we started crossing those ideas and seeing well okay so this word so in a way the the, the way we 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 sort of like started um uh getting away with murder um it was that uh we started working on the roofs and the ceilings right basically where where she can go you know there so mm-hmm. there's some and, and there's some special qualities that are there and that, that that are really sort of like provoking something when you see the interior when you model it when you have a render view and so and and well and hopefully once it gets built um that's going to be there for you know to, to create a more um a valuable uh, experience in that space basically and so we're, we're trying to see you know we, we we try to put that into the equation. We see how much it weighs. That also depends on what sort of project or system we're going for. If it's something that we we ourselves are pushing or that we are funding ourselves, you know, or that we got this grant for doing this. And so we have like an open agenda, then we, we free ourselves of all constraints, right? If we have a client, that's a totally different story, right? Um, and yeah, so, but, but that again, like, uh, I think like the, the phenomenal, phenomenological experience um, of 
a space, it also it comes as a question, not only as, as for the space that we're building, but also as for the the the, the materials that we're working on, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think that the, the shift to to air as a material uh, from like imagining a, a build from with with air it, it by itself was a shift in the in the way we sort of see these phenomenological experiences yeah. that a building can really uh, kind of provide and and I think that uh, that I mean these are just just like start like it's kind of starting now to really inform uh, mm -hmm. what new experiences uh, you know uh, this this approach or this methods of of working can really offer or or you know uh, yeah. like how do we really uh, approach it and I think uh, I think that uh, this uh, you know the constant fight between or not fight I would say the constant sorry uh, constant uh, you can say you know uh, negotiation between this this high tech and the low tech yeah. and, and this constant um, uh, you know the, the, the argument from the sustainable uh, uh, architecture uh, uh, domain where they say no we have to go back to the old building systems and and the and the other high techs really sort of push them to uh, mm -hmm. okay no we need to really uh, produce everything digitally and you know by a robotic hand mm -hmm. and everything is digitized and everything is an AI. I think this kind of uh, the time, space, and context that really kind of comes with the with the mid tech. I, mean, mm -hmm. I I I really kind of uh, connect to uh, connect to that. Um, yeah, uh, and I think that I mean there's across. Across the world, a uh, lot of these uh, these developing contexts, like the con the context of developing nations or or, or regions, um, are uh, sort of making um, you know interesting processes to really deal with the challenges that they are uh, coming across uh, in their in their in their daily everyday sort of uh, life. So, so I think that. Uh, I mean, it's it's a long way to sort of go, but at mm. the same time, it's quite an interesting shift. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and like even for, I mean, and it happens also like that. We 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 want to place ourselves in a in a in a in, in a position where where we can actually um, talk about these things with a certain property, right? Like with a certain. Um, uh, know how and and to build up is just by doing right and and the the way that we also see it is that for instance we work on this uh, the logics are, are taking some of cultural ideas that are there right? like these clay tiles and the work of these sort of craft, craftsmen um, that's something that it's kind of like it's getting um, it's about to be extinct here in Chile at least in Chile, I went, and we know it happens everywhere. It happens in Asia, in, everywhere. But um, but here in Chile, it's very sort of like localized, and there are like three, four guys that they do this work. And it's, I mean, if these guys are gone, then you know, you know, the the all knowledge behind is gone with it. So. So the project, besides you know pushing for something that is about space, about gravity, about the weight of clay tiles, etc., it it starts from this point, and and it is also pushing for you know an identi identitarian agenda, I would say, also that comes with it, and you know, and to be placed and to say, look, like from this part of the world, we know we we have certain knowledge, and, and we want to you know put this into the conversation. Uh, in, in a contemporary conversation, basically, right? Um, or the same with Coliwe, which is like actually grows like everywhere in the south of Chile and nobody like, like people use it for, you know, like decoration or that's, a, yeah, that kind of stuff, but they don't, and well, or probably they do, but we haven't seen that utilize, like taking the structural potential that is already there, you know, and so, Again, we we look at our context and we see how we can push, you know, um, this potential, um, and it, the potential can come from a culture, from a material, from a community in particular, you know, or or all all of them all together. Um, yeah. 
but but yeah and and, and also um and by being placed here in the mid-tech and by looking at both extremes, I mentioned it also that I think that the, the work of, or our work and the work for everyone who wants to sort of like address the agenda is, is way more curatorial, right? Mm. Like you have to like be critic about it and to see like what and when to take from which side. And yeah. so, so we, we don't we are not afraid of instructing ourselves in different softwares or you know or to reach to different disciplines or different people and to collaborate actually that's something that we really push for um mm. and we do that because we we, we want to know more you know and, and we want to you know when we take a decision we want to be completely you know certain about that decision yet you know waiting for it to sort of like build up on its own and to see like and surprise ourselves with the outcome so um yeah and and i would say that a, a friend of mine said like um well you're a, you're a, a technocratic basically mm -hmm. you're a technocratic based uh studio and i said to him like well not really we're more technocritic you know mm -hmm. like we we, we really want to embrace Technology as something that is again that is not it's a continuum. It's, it's a continuum, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. As as you were saying, like to be placed in a certain timeline. Well, but technology it, it, it's been there since you know we started cutting with stones and in, in you know like prehistorian times and and now with the AI or you know or whatever is going to come next and yeah. well, but that's always going to be evolving with human race and you know our cultures and so it's being placed there is being placed with your time and looking you know uh backwards and forward and to to be able to do that and to get the most and to learn the most from what has been done and to speculate the most for what it could be done um i think that's a really sort of like comfortable position for us at least and yeah. and yeah yeah Okay, so if uh, I'll just uh, open it, if there are a few questions, uh, please do raise your hands and uh, you could come in and ask your question. Um, and if uh, we'll sort of hold on for a while, but if not, then maybe uh, then I have um, uh, one more one more last thing to uh, sort of talk. So anyone with uh, questions, please do raise your hands. Uh, yeah. So uh, I just, anyways, go ahead with the with the last thing uh, mm -hmm. that you meant. I mean, while discussing a few of these processes, uh, the in the OI uh, project, you said there's a there's a blending of you can say many uh, disciplines or many um, uh, you can say. Hello. I think I'm. I'm stuck. No. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so there's a there's a blending of these many disciplines that really inform uh, each other, and I think there's there's a there's a connect to systems not just um, within architecture, but also uh, to other uh, professions or other kind of disciplines. Mm -hmm. Now, now th th this came across just well when you were mentioning, like, what did what did uh, really open this up, like uh, like or maybe kind of allow this. Is it the material or is it the uh, say the the digital that kind of now is uh, everywhere in kind of all uh, industries and all processes and all disciplines. So, but 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 at the same time, I think if you if you really go uh, work with a cloth or a sheet, you are somewhere sort of linked to uh, you know the other disciplines. But then what do you bring in? Uh, from there, or how do you bring in uh, either an expertise or maybe an approach to what you're doing? Is kind of you know it, it takes these kind of interesting routes through the through digital processes, or through kind of material selection. You know what kind of things you're working. Yeah. With. So, so I think I think you know that that really is an is an interesting uh, uh, reading. I would say like you know culturally how how these other, how it kind of blends these many things. Mm -hmm. And I think also kind of brings in the, the, not just the disciplines, but also kind of everyday 
uh, practices within this like it could be like the kind of the nest uh, if if i'm just kind of you know reflecting back and kind of looking at like if it if if it is um, if, if the if the digital drawing or if the if the if the maker really uh, you know gets that information it could be anyone who really could build it or you know yeah. the 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 OI is is right now no, no yeah. more a domain of of you know only uh, contractors or makers or builders but like the one which basic skills everyday skills they could really sort of make it so and i think that that opens up this uh, uh, you know uh, experimental phase that we are in right now to kind of many people and i think that's where that there is hardly a, 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 a kind of you know separation in that sense you know yeah <laughs> absolutely i mean uh, i'm um it's, it's great that you mentioned it because um that's something that yeah i mean the 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 manpower behind a building up and and to be you know as uh, as transferable as possible is something that we we want to we, we we're starting pushing that in the in in, in our last uh, um, research i would say like from the last couple of years that um this is although it could it could be seen as really sort of like tailor made architecture right um when we when we aim for doing a, a systematic uh, approach not only to the design process but to the results and when we talk about applications and we pluralize you know the the, the idea of a certain project that could be pasted and uh we we want to do that in a very sort of like simple way and 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 because yeah and like even like if we if we go for really sort of like high tech processes of machinery behind uh then that's going to be centralized again so the way to distribute that knowledge is to you know is, is for people just to you know like yeah. everyday people to actually be active participants of the materialization you know so and and yeah, and actually the, the next project, which is at a prototype uh, phase now, um, we the, the, we're aiming to to put all the outcomes and and all the the the, the evaluation in digital and, and, and physical uh, into an open source platform and and to create this sort of like step by step manual um, that we can share with people and that we actually we're also like collaborating with a foundation in the south of Chile that we hope. Once we end up um, with the with the whole process, um, we're gonna go them with them and to start sort of like viralizing the the the, the idea and you know and like, and this is like very sort of like open source. Um, the same with the with the inflatable pavilion, right? Which is like yeah. an voidal shape, and it's really sort of like everyone. Can and copy it and please do if you if you feel that you need you know we we're yeah. not holding any any copyright of it and and we don't really believe in it and so but what but again we are moving also with this sort of like experimental projects we're moving towards or maybe we are as close to architecture per se or in the more, more traditional sense as to industrial design right mm -hmm. so like the outcomes maybe we can call them products right mm -hmm. um because they can be replicated and you know or you can get your own and or yeah. i don't know or you can build your own right so yeah. um but but again like and and that again comes from the idea of bringing disciplines together and to see like and and to blur um whatever well i would say that whatever um sort of like traditional sense of doing architecture um, that that we see that is already there, we try to avoid, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that comes really naturally, and and it's not because we just want to, but 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 you know because we see that there's a lot to learn from industrial design, from fashion industry, from you know from engineers, of course, you know, and there's way too low to learn from them. So um, yeah, so. Welcome to collaborate and welcome to 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 embrace other disciplines together and and, and to build up together these ideas. Um, I think is is the way to go, or at least yeah. it's our way to go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Cool. So I mean, it's it, it was it was fantastic uh, 
you know, having this conversation with you. And I think there were so many, uh, you know, new um, ideas, but at the same time, quite a, quite a resonating sort of voice from, you know, far across, uh, you know, the yeah. other side of the of the globe. So, so I think, I think, I mean, I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed this uh, conversation. So, uh, well, thanks, Felipe. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Well, thank thanks to Shan. Thanks to you. Thanks to Anush for the invitation also, and and hope that that this is closing up your symposium um, as expected and. I had a really great time and thanks to you also for the conversation. Really, really provoking and, you know, interesting conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this is the last um, session for this year's uh, C-City, this um, uh, C-Conversation. Uh, we will meet again in June uh, of 2023 with our next series uh, to start. From. So thank you all and see you and good night. Good night here and good noon there. So, yeah. See you. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.